All right, so in this video, we are going to concentrate on um, some more uh, facts about the arteries. In the first video, we sort of looked at the pressures and um, the principles on which pressures in here lie on, uh, um, are based on. Um, today, I just want to uh, concentrate, first of all, on flow. Um, so we're going to go B. Uh, we're going to talk about flow. So there are two types of flows that you can talk about. There is a streamlined flow, all right? And uh, this streamlined flow is known as the laminar flow. And um, we see that if it's in a vessel, the streamlined flow has been observed uh, to be on the outermost layer, um, okay? So it's been observed to be in the outermost layers. And as we m move towards the center, we see that it becomes slow, okay? So it's uh, mostly on the outermost, and on the outermost, it's fast. Center it flows. Then there's a second type of uh, movement known as turbulent. Now, in the turbulent flow, this is mostly interrupted flow. Okay, it's interrupted flow, and um, you find that fluid passes a constriction. Okay, so it could be a constriction, it could be a sharp turn, um, it could be a rough surface, but in either case, you're going to find that it makes this turbulent flow that goes on, making um, what are known as wells, all right? Um, whilst the laminar flow is flow to the center and silent, um, we see that the turbulent one actually makes uh, some noise or it makes sound, all right, that can be um, detected, uh, that can be uh, heard, so to speak. So if you're talking about a laminar flow, you want to envision um, the first part of a cigarette smoke, okay? But as you look to the, towards the top part, you're going to see turbulence, and then the first part is lamina. Um, the other thing that I would like to talk about when, it, uh, when we talk about turbulence is that um, the flow is great and um, you see that uh, it's a crosswise movement. So the worlds that I was talking about, uh, what are formed, and they are also known as eddy currents. Uh, having learned this, the tendency for turbulency. Uh, uh, or turbulent flow to happen uh, can actually be calculated. We use the Ray Reynolds number, all right? So it is directly proportional to the velocity of blood. And um, of course, this is um, uh, goes without saying. Uh, um, the more the velocity, the more you you would not. Um, turbulence happening, so it's directly proportional to the velocity as well as the diameter uh, of the blood vessel and the density. And then it is inversely proportional to the viscosity of blood, so the Raynaud's can actually be calculated uh, this way. So with uh, the top part being velocity, uh, diameter, as well as density, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, as well as density, and this is over viscosity. Um, now, the Reynolds number is 
it can be noted as a measure of tendency okay for turbulence to occur um so maybe i don't know if i can maybe just go through some of this the v which is the velocity of blood is in centimeters um per second and then we have the density in centimeters and then um oh, sorry the diameter in centimeters and then the density itself um as well as the viscosity okay uh viscosity can be measured in poise all right so having done that we did say that laminar flow um can be disturbed because of branching points and arter uh, of the arteries and then you have the turbulency going on and constrictions can also build up on this and this produces the turbulence that we were talking about and then if you're listening over arteries this type of noise that you're going to hear because of this uh, disturbance they're known as brewies all right so brewies are the noises that you're going to hear. And then we also have the um, Korotkov sounds that are heard when measuring blood pressure, um, which are based on uh, turbulency. Um, and so we just want to go into details a little bit about the, um, the Korotkov sound. So the Korotkov sound uh, spelled Korotkov. Um, the distinct sounds that you're able to distinguish when um, blood is um, disturbed. So what you do is, if this is uh, the arterial end, you're going to cuff, all right? You're going to place a cuff here. And when you place a cuff, you're going to occlude this area. So you're literally going to make it that way. So if you're occluding it this way, you're reducing the space through which uh, blood moves through. So if you're going to do that, it means you are um, increasing the turbulence. And if you're increasing the turbulence, once you release, okay, so what you're going to do is, first of all, you're going to occlude until you hear nothing and then you're going to release and then start hearing uh, uh, sounds. So when the blood pressure is applied, first of all, you want to disrupt. Okay, so the first concept is disrupt the flow um, of, uh, or disrupt the stable flow of blood. And then um, you're going to then generate particular uh, information about this person's blood pressure because number two after you you are disrupting how you're going to disrupt in fact not number two you're going to um, inflate okay so this is going to inflate and what you're going to hear is no sound uh, so after that, you start lowering the pressure. So as you lower the pressure in the artery, uh, you're going to go through phases, okay? So you're going to go through phases of sound. And the phases of sound are, first of all, you're going to hear sharp tapping noise okay as the blood starts to um, whoosh back into the artery and then the reading on the cuff at this point is usually equal to um, SBP all right and then at the point where this uh, the sound sort of stops that is the one that is recorded as DBP all right, now if I could go through the stages uh, more clearly, 
first of all, you have the sharp tapping sound, which you can characterize as SBP. Then you have the pressure falling. The blood will move into a second stage. So my, my students usually laugh at this. So you go whoosh and then swish. <laughs> it will be a swishing sound, all right? That is then um, followed by the third stage. And the third stage is really characterized by more pounding sound as blood moves through the vessel. And finally, you're going to have the fourth stage, um, which is a sort of blowing noise. And we're going to practice this in our lab so that we see if we can hear all of this. And then we have the fifth one, which is silence. Uh, so you go whoosh, whoosh, pound, blowing noise, and then silence. All right? So the skilled practitioner, you you can get an accurate blood pressure reading um, within one session, while others will need to confirm uh, just in order to uh, get these readings done. Uh, so SBP and DBP. Um, I will send some more notes that. Um, sort of explain exactly where you can actually get the first diastolic sound, which is on the, the soft, uh, on the softer, on the blowing silence. And then when it's silent, that is when you say uh, second diastolic sound. So usually, of course, the first diastolic sound will be a little bit higher, and you want to get the silence, which is now the 80 millimeters of mercury, or what is close to it, uh, according to the person that you are handling. Um, well, now there are completely electronic blood pressure reading machines that are programmed to listen for these coracoff sounds and then take readings as appropriate. So it would be good for you to go back to the basics and uh, just see what is happening. Um, so you find a, a little bit of uh, some away from normal issues where you see you so oh, you, you hear turbulence occurring more frequently in people who are anemic, and that is because of uh, in, uh, the viscosity of the blood is lower in, in these uh, individuals. So of course, you find that uh, more turbulence will happen. And um, this may also explain um, the systolic murmurs that are common in these individuals as well. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about uh, arterial-wise um, maybe is the fact that we have waves within the arteries, so I want to talk about pulse wave, all right? Now, the pulse wave, you see that systolic blood pressure is established by the contraction, um, the contract activities of the ventricles. So we already noted that this SBP really depends on the stroke volume as well as compliance of the arterial uh, tree. And we, so we also have already established that it is reduced when aortic uh, compliance is reduced. Um, I beg your pardon, is increased. But when compliance of the aorta uh, decreases, it means that we're going to have a high SBP. Uh, on the other hand, DBP is characteristic of the uh, total peripheral resistance, and uh, we're talking about arterioles in this case. Um, we also um, could state here that the recoil uh, of the aorta also affects uh, the DBP. All right, having said that, um, the alternating expansion and recoil of the arterial wall can be felt as a pulse. So recoil, okay, and expansion, this is what is felt as a pulse and you can feel this on the body surfaces 
uh, and it is described usually as the number of waves per, uh, per minute. And these um, pulse rate and heart rate are very similar, uh, though different. Um, so you see that slower pulse rate is recorded than the heart rate in uh, a weak con uh, ventricular contraction, uh, or where there's uh, cardiac insufficiency. Uh, maybe one more thing before we end the video that I would like you to appreciate is that pulse pressure itself is defined um, as the difference between systolic and diastolic. We've already established that. And in within this area, this is where we uh, appreciate the mean arterial uh, pressure. Do not forget how it differs um, from the other uh, systemic pressure that we talked about. Um, the velocity of pressure pulse in the vascular system is very much dependent on the compliance. Uh, so again, you see that the greater the compliance, lower the velocity. Um, hence, you see that velocity is slow in the aorta and much, much faster in less compliant uh, small distal arteries. Uh, so in the aorta, you see that uh, velocity is between 3 to 5 meters per second. Um, then in large arteries, it's about 7 to 10. Then in the small muscular arteries, which are less compliant, you find it between 15 and 35 uh, meters per second. Um, we also note that there are several things that could increase uh, pulse wave uh, velocity. And these will include things such as age um, as well as smoking. Um, so just a few things to appreciate about uh, the arteries. In the next video, we'll be talking about microcirculation.